Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, welcome. It is great to be here. I have a really cute card to share with you today. It is a, uh, a, a fun fold pop-up card. So it's uh, there's lots of layers and lots of measurements <laughs> so um, sit tight it'll be great uh, and we're going to be using some brand new products to create this card today so while everyone is finding their notifications that I've gone live I'll just bring this up on my other devices so I can see everyone's comments there so bear with me one moment while I get those ready okay um Let's refresh this one over here. Okay. How is everyone? How is your weekend? Let me know as you're jumping in. Okay, great. Hey, Brenton, how are you? Thank you for joining me today. How was your weekend, Brenton? I hope you had a good one. I had uh, a fairly quiet one. Uh, yesterday, actually, well, um, was yesterday? Yes, yesterday. Well, the day, the day before, really, um, my hubby started looking at the front yard and, um, was, uh, considering about putting a, a drain in because when we get a lot of rain, our front garden floods. And so it's really hard to grow anything in there because it gets too wet. It stays really wet and soggy and because the, the um, front yard slopes slightly. So the rain just runs down off the lawn straight into the garden. Anyway, so he did. He decided that he would do it. He jumped in. He did it. So it's a big, big project. So he has been digging drainage um, and putting like, um, yeah, just drainage pipes and all sorts of things. Um, to drain the water away from that garden. So um, yes, so big job. So I was busy uh, checking on him on and off throughout the day yesterday, checking his progress, making sure he was uh, he was going okay. And it was really, really hot yesterday. So I was worried about him working out in the heat, um, but made sure he kept his fluids up and had his sunscreen on and his hat and everything. Um, yeah, so all was good. And uh, he's got to finish off the project um, on the long weekend coming up as well because he couldn't quite get it all finished. So, um, yeah, the drain's all in, but he's got to fix up the garden bed now. And then I guess um, we have to go and find some plants to plant in there. It's been really hard to find anything that would grow in there previously um, because everything would just get too wet. And also, too, that part of the house is in the shade a lot of the time, too. So doesn't get sunlight and yeah so it's been hard to find something to grow there so hopefully now um, the ground the garden won't be so wet and we'll be able to grow something which will be good and then it will look much nicer <laughs> all right let me check some of these comments oh you had a chilled weekend Brenton nice chilled weekends are good nice and relaxing that is good I've got a hair here I can just see it out of the corner of my eye there it is where did that bit go? It was annoying me. I could see it out of the out of my peripheral. <laughs> All right. Oh, now I have to grab down my little host code and my little blog link. I realized after I finished filming last week that I didn't have them down on my desk last week. Totally forgot to mention them. So I thought, well, that's not very helpful, is it? If somebody's looking to go and find my online store or my blog. <laughs> uh, hey, Fee, how are you? Great to have you here. Oh, you love my earrings? Thank you very much. These are my new gelato earrings. And I have a matching brooch, which is probably hard to see because I sit down a little bit low. But I have my matching um, brooch here. And um, I, I just love these ones. They remind me of the time that, well, I've had a lot of gelato over the years. <laughs> but um, yeah, when my daughter, um, our, our daughter was going to university up in um, Townsville, she lived up there for three years to study up there. And uh, we went up to visit a few times. And one of the times we went up there, she took us to this gelato bar that was down by the beach. And oh my goodness, it was the best gelato I have ever, ever had. And I think I had pistachio. Can't remember what other flavor. Do you have pistachio and 
strawberry or just pistachio i can't remember but it was the yummiest gelato i have ever tasted oh my goodness so when i saw these ones i thought oh i have to have those because that's a memory of um that visit up to townsville <laughs> hey rose how are you great to have you with us oh you love my brooch too fee yeah it's pretty cute I, I kind of need to tilt the camera down a little bit, don't I? Or I need to sit up straight so you can see my brooch. <laughs> Actually, bef just before I went live, I considered swapping over, but then I ran out of time because we're going to be playing with birds today. And I thought I should be wearing my bird earrings and my one of my bird brooches, but I didn't have time to switch over. But I liked how these ones went with my, my pink shirt. This is my crafting t-shirt. See, look at this. Forecast is card making with a chance of chocolate because, you know, we always need chocolate when we're crafting, don't we? <laughs> so I've got my, my crafting shirt on. I should have I should um, get one made with a chance of um, gelato, shouldn't I? Then it would match my brooch. <laughs> hey, Tanya, how are you? Lovely to have you with us today. All right. So just mentioning about the weekend and asking what everybody got up to. Share what your weekend was like in the comments. We'd love to hear about it. And uh, if you've got any crafting done as well, let me know about that too. Um, okay, so let me tell you a few things that are happening and then we're going to jump in. I am prepared today. I have got my project prepped. Um, we're going to be playing with some brand new product, which is always exciting. Oh, it's hot there, Tanya, is it? Yeah, it's... Uh, Whereabouts in Australia are you? Are you north? I'm, I'm guessing you must be north or perhaps west. Um, we've, we've had some really hot weather here in Sydney over the last few days. Yesterday got up to 40 degrees Celsius for any of anyone who's overseas, that's in Celsius. Um, but today's a bit of a funny day. It's cooler. It's still a bit muggy, um, humid for anyone who doesn't understand Australian slang. <laughs> Um, and it's overcast, so I don't know what it's doing. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh, thank you, Diana. <laughs> I've got my matching brooch on as well. I was just showing Fee. She hadn't seen it before. So, um, yes. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so let me tell you a few things that are coming up. So I have got my um, January tutorial bundle. Well, actually, it's not mine. It's the Crafty Collaborations Group. Um, January tutorial bundle. It's one that I collaborate on with demonstrators from all around the world. Now this one is available to everybody. You can either shop with me and get it for free with a qualifying order of $75 or more. Or if you already have your own demonstrator that you shop with or you're a demonstrator yourself, you can purchase this for $28 from me. So just flick me a message or send me an email to let me know. Um, and there are 42 projects in here and a lot of these are using brand new products from the mini catalog and some from celebration as well um, and some from annual and I think there's a couple in there that are using online exclusive products as well so check that out lots and lots of great projects in there including one from me all right the other thing is, of course, you all know by now that we have the brand new mini catalog, which went live on the 4th of January. Beautiful pro products in this one and lots of great project samples in here. Um, if you are stuck with ideas of how to use some of these um, products, you can always use the catalog as, um, as creative inspiration. Look at those ones. Whoop. That's a stamp set that I have, but I haven't used it yet. But there's lots of um, lots of great ideas in here. So this is, oh, look, there we go. There's an ice cream. I've got that one too. So I'll have to make sure that I wear these earrings and this brooch when I use this stamp set or bundle, I should say, because there's stamps and dies. When I use this one, I'll have to make sure I have these earrings on um, and my brooch but I haven't used it yet. So yeah, anyway, so check that out. Now, if you haven't got a copy of this um, catalog and you would like one, or if you want a copy of the annual catalog, please let me know. I have got a link. Um, actually, let me put that link up now in the comments because I have got a link if you would like to request a catalog. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put all of my links there. Let me just find, I had them up earlier. Now I don't know what I've done with them. Where are they? There they are. 
I'm going to put all of my links there in the comments and then that way you can navigate to anywhere you'd like to go if you want to go to my blog, if you want to request a catalogue, um, all of those links will be there for you. So I'll just pop that in the comments. There we go. And um, for anybody who is watching the replay on YouTube or watching the replay on Facebook, I will pop that link um, in the description as well of the video. So you'll be able to find um, whatever you need. All right, so that's the mini catalogue. Really excited. I'm going to keep that out because we're going to be using something from that um, later for our sentiment, something special. And we've also got the celebration brochure or the celebration promotion, which is running from the 4th of January until the 29th of February. Yes, it is a leap year this year. I get an extra day of February. Um, so celebration products you can't purchase, but you can earn them for free with qualifying orders. Here in Australia, those qualifying orders are $90 or $180. Um, there are two different levels of um, products that you can choose from, but there are so many in here. We've got paper, stamps, dyes, ribbon, embellishments, something for everyone. So many different products. I feel like this celebration brochure has the biggest offering of any that we've had since I've been a demonstrator in my seven years. Um, what does everybody else think? Anybody else who's a demonstrator or who has, you know, purchased from sale or earned from celebration before what do you think do you think this is the the biggest one i feel like it is um now during celebration i'm not going to go through all of it but we are using some of the products from here today so i'm pretty excited about that because it's the first time i've had a play with this oh actually no i tell a lie it is the second time because i did make a little gift for um, one of my customers last week and i used some of this um, paper for that for that gift to decorate it up um, now, during celebration, um, it is a fantastic time to join Stampin' Up! as well. And then when you join, you get an ongoing 20% discount on all of your products. Minimum 20%. You can build that up over time um, if you choose to. But if you just want to stay on the 20%, that's okay. But 20% discount on your crafting supplies, why wouldn't you do that? Um, that's why I joined, to get the discount. Um, and also, too, you're only going to pay $169 for the starter kit. And the starter kit is made up of whatever you want to put in it. So it's not predetermined. You can select what current products you would like to put in there. The only thing you can't put in there is host products and celebration products because these ones need to be earned. Um, so, yeah, you can pop anything you like in that in that um, starter kit, only pay $169, but you're choosing up to $235 worth of product. So you're already getting $66 worth of product for free, plus free shipping, which is usually on that size order, it's usually around about 13 ish dollars. So that's added savings. Plus, if you join during celebration, you can choose between the amazing Glass Mat Studio. Now, I don't own one, so I only have a photograph of one, and you can find it in the brochure. Um, it's got the Glass Mat, which is tempered glass. It is heat proof, scratch proof, etc., etc. So you can heat emboss on it. Um, it's great for using with your inks. Um, it wipes clean really easily. It comes with a cleaning cloth. And it comes with this silicon mat as well. So the silicon mat's got, it's really hard to see in the picture, but it's got different little sections. Whoops. It's got different little sections in the silicon mat and it fits ink spots or you can mix colors in there. The big section is great for um, putting your big ink pads or you can dab off your brushes on there because it's got like a textured surface, which you can't see in the photo. Um, but it has a textured surface, so you can, you know, when we're using our blending brushes, we like to tap off a little bit of the excess ink before we get started, before we start colouring. You can actually use that there because it's textured. It reminds me of my dog's licking mat a little bit <laughs> because it's got, like, the texture in the silicon. Um, and then there's a little well area here as well where you can mix colours or, um, you know, use it as a as a little water well for your watercolors, etc. So that is valued at $106. You can choose that for free to add to your starter kit, or you can choose an additional $51 to add to your starter kit. So if you didn't want the glass mat, 
which it's worth $106. So that's better value. Um, but if you don't want that and you would prefer to choose additional products, then you can choose an additional $51 worth of products. So all of that during celebration, I would love to have you join our beautiful crafting community. So if you'd like more information about joining my team, please let me know. Um, do not be concerned that I'm going to push you to sell products or anything like that because it's not a requirement from Stampin' Up! and it's not a requirement for me either for you to sell products. You can simply purchase for your own crafting enjoyment um, and enjoy, enjoy all the great benefits for yourself as well as enjoy our beautiful crafting community. Um, which we have a lot of fun. You're also going to get um, be able to get your hands on new products early. We get catalogs early. Um, we have um, demonstrator exclusive events, which we've got one coming up uh, very soon. And in fact, the registration is still open until the 31st of January. So if you'd like to come to our event down in Melbourne, um, if you join now, you have the opportunity of doing that. Um, and what else? Oh, so many things. So many. I've got a list of things. Um, we have an exclusive demonstrator website and we have an exclusive demonstrator Facebook group where people from all around the world are posting their beautiful projects every day. So there's heaps and heaps of creative inspiration. Stampin' Up! gives us free training and explains things to us and helps us to learn about how to use the, the website, where to find things. And I do that with my team as well. Um, some additional things. Um, yeah, and there's no lock-in period. That's the best thing. You can exit at any time, any time you like. You can leave. So if you find that it's not right for you or you've changed your mind once you've joined, not a problem. You just simply stop ordering as a demonstrator and you come back as a customer. So super easy. All right, there's so much more I could tell you about our team um, and about the benefits of joining Stampin' Up. So if you would like more information about that, please feel free to get in contact with me. And um, I would love to give you more information. And I have a little brochure as well I can send out to you. Um, so definitely let me know. You can contact me via Messenger. Um, you can see a message button at the top of my Facebook page. Or you can contact me via my email. Now, I have a new email. So I've got two emails now. So you can still contact me through Mandy's Papercraft Creations at gmail.com. Or you can now contact me at, now let me get it right, hello at mandywithabee.com. Because now I have my own .com. It's brand new. I just got it on the weekend. So I'm super excited. So now I have a new email address as well. So you're welcome to message me um, at either of those. So that's hello at mandywithabee.com. Okay, so that is all the newsy stuff. How about we jump in to some crafting? I might think of other things as I go. I don't know if I've forgotten anything. I might have, possibly. I've forgotten, probably forgot something. Oh, the, the um, what I was going to say too is the card I made last week with the, um, hmm. hang on a sec. The Painted Lavender Bundle. The Painted Lavender Bundle um, is currently, of uh, the stamp set itself, is currently um, out of stock. It is proving to be so popular, everybody wants it. So it's currently out of stock. But if you're one of my customers or you'd like to be one of my customers and um, you wanted to get that, then please let me know that you are interested in purchasing that and I can let you know when it comes back in stock. It's due back in stock. Um, what week are we? Today's the 22nd of January. It's due in uh, mid next week, about mid next week currently. It might come in a bit earlier. We don't know. But yes, if you would like to know when that um, comes in, the Painted Lavender stamp set, then please let me know and I can definitely um, keep you up to date with that. All right, um, let's see, let's see. Oh, Brenton, Brenton just realized it was his stamp anniversary yesterday. Congratulations, how many years, Brenton? Oh, that's exciting. You'll definitely have to post about that. Oh, congratulations. That's so cool. We love celebrating stamp anniversaries in our um, 
in our team. So stamp anniversaries are our Stampin' Up anniversaries. We call them stamp anniversaries. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. I'll be coming up to my, this will be my eighth year this year, but not until September. So yeah, the time is ticking on. Um, Brenton says he finds celebration um, brochure has more in it than last time. Yeah, 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 I agree. This time definitely, um, yeah, definitely does. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, what am I? Do, do, do. Hey, Julie, how are you? Great to have you here. Sorry, I'm just scrolling back and catching up. Uh, Amber said she just checked the customer website. It's still showing. Um, it's still showing and doesn't say unavailable. Ah, so maybe it came in. Let me do a little quick check. Maybe I'm speaking. I didn't check before I went live today, but I noticed on um, last week that it was out of stock after I had filmed my live. And I was like, no, I just filmed with that. <laughs> and then I, I did my blog and everything. Um, I thought, oh, well, that's okay. I'll just let people know and then they can, they can um, let me know if they're interested and then I can keep them up to date. So let's have a look. I can check right now for you to see if it is still out of stock, but if it's showing on the customer website, it should be available. Oh, it must have come in. It's not there anymore. It's not on the um, not orderable list now. Oh, it must have come back in. Yay, disregard everything I said. You can purchase the, uh, the lavender bundle and the entire perennial lavender suite right now. So it's available. Yay, thank you for that, Amber. I would not have been any of the wiser. What's No, what's the term? None the wiser, if she hadn't have said that. <laughs> Yay. Oh, that's good. I'm actually designing a class with that at the moment. Shh. Going to be coming up next month. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, three years, Brenton. Congratulations. That's awesome. Your three-year stamp anniversary. Fantastic. Oh, Fee said few. Yes, yes, because Fee, I know you've been designing with that as well, Fee, haven't you? Yep. <laughs> it's there now. Great. Um, oh, Amber said, can I show everyone my card from last week that I'm referring to? Yes, I can. Hang on one sec. Oops. Oh, wait on. I'm crashing into my shredder. I had that out. I was doing some shredding. Hang on a sec. Oh, move that. Okay. This is the one that I'm referring to that I created last week. Did you see that one? Now it's on my blog as well. And if you go over to my blog, um, you'll get all the measurements over there um, and the instructions of how to put it together. There's my blog, mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. And it'll be the first one that'll pop up because it's the most recent at the moment until I blog today's card that we're going to make. But this was last week's one. And you can see... And see the shimmer and shine on there but I'm loving playing with this suite and Amber's been playing with this this suite as well we've both been playing with it and um, oh, so beautiful so so pretty I just love it love 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 it so watch out for my class next month coming up with that one um, all right Oh, you're loving the suite too, Brenton. Yes, I've seen some of your beautiful projects that you've been creating with that. It, they, they're so gorgeous. I don't think you can go wrong with that suite because it's just such a beautiful suite. I think any project that um, that you make with that is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, oh, you've been waiting for that suite too, Julie. Fantastic. It's available. Go grab it while, before it sells out again. <laughs> It's proving to be, I think, I think that's the first stamp set here in Australia that sold out from the new, or that went non-orderable from the new mini catalogue. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who's on here who's a demonstrator, but I think that's the first one from the mini that's gone unorderable already before the end of the month. Like it's only been out for one, two, two weeks, and then it went unorderable. Not even, not even two weeks, and it had already sold out. So it's very, very popular. So if anybody wants it, I would suggest grabbing it as soon as you can because if it goes not orderable again, we don't know how long before it'll come back again. So, yeah. Hey, Briar, how are you? 
How is the weather over there today? We've had some very hot weather over here in uh, Sydney. And except for today, today's gone all cloudy and gloomy and weird. So, all right, I'm going to move my keyboard and we are going to start playing. I have got a really pretty card to make with you today. And it's a fun one because it's fun fold and it's got a pop up inside too. And I'm going to show you my inspiration as well. All right, so I'm going to tip the camera down to the desktop. So let me cover it up while I do the transition just so I don't make you all dizzy. Here we go. Okay, bear with me while I get this ready. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's tighten everything up. There we go. Okay, and adjust those lights. Oh, wow, I got it nearly straight today. Nearly, but not quite. Let's just do a little tweak here and we'll see if we can straighten that up a tad. Now these need to come down because you can't see them all the way up there, can you? There we go. Is that straight? Almost. Almost, but not quite. That way. That's better. Good. I like it to be nice and straight, otherwise it bothers me. And I figure if it bothers me, it probably bothers other people too. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pop this over at the corner here. Now, if you are looking for any of these products, um, you can find them in my online store at, uh, you can find my online store by going to my blog, mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com and click on the shop button at the top of the page. Or you can also find my, my shop link um, on my Stampin' Up! website as well. That's mandywitherby.stampinup.net. This is my January 2024 host code. So when you're shopping with me, feel free to use my host code. And when your order's over $75, I will send you a thank you gift. All right, let's jump on in. Very hot, oh, very hot there too, Briar. Oh, no good. That's summer, isn't it, hey? Good time to stay in in the air conditioning and do some craft. <laughs> hey, Kelly, how are you? Great to have you here. All right, so first of all, let's have a look at what we are going to be playing with today. And then I'll show you the project we're going to be making. So first of all, we are going to be making uh, playing with the Flight and Airy 12 by 12 designer series paper. Now, this is one of the free um, products in the celebration brochure that you can earn with there it is there with a $90 order okay it's on page six of the celebration brochure there it is up there but I'm going to show you the paper live it's hard to see it in the brochure and the colors kind of are a little bit washed out in the brochure compared to the actual paper um, so I'm going to show you in real life um, so yes, there is also, if you're looking for it, there is also some pool party, um, crinkle ribbon in here as well, which I also have. I actually don't have any ribbon on this card, um, currently. And you know what? I didn't even get any bling out. I, we probably, I don't know if we'll be adding any ribbon today, but I might just grab that ribbon out just in case. And I might grab my, my bling down cause I forgot to grab that. Um, but that's where you'll find it. So let's have a little look. I'll grab my ribbon and bling in a moment. I'll just show you the beautiful paper first. Let's go this side. How gorgeous are these birds? Now you can um, fussy cut these with your paper snips. You can use your punches with these. You can die cut them. That's what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be doing some die cutting. And, um, oh, what's un unorderable? Did you mean Briar? Oh, I thought that the, so last week the um, the stamp set from the Perennial Lavender Suite was unorderable, but it's actually come back in now. So it's currently orderable again. Um, that's the Painted Lavender stamp set. Yeah, but it's available again now. So I was, um, I was just told that. 
<laughs> all right so i'll turn these over now this one this is the reverse side um and you can see i've been doing some choppy chop chop so i've been chopping out some of these birds to use oh there's a little bit of sticky note on there um to use in some of my projects but that's that's the the um, back side of the paper or the reverse side i shouldn't say back side doesn't sound nice does it reverse side <laughs> then we've got these pretty birds on the, uh in up in the trees and then we've got this beautiful um is that copper clay what is that one i'm just having a look on the packet to see pecan pie pecan pie i'm having a look on the packet to see what um color it is then we've got this one oops now i can't i'm all fingers and thumbs there we go and on the back we've got this beautiful watercolor so all of the birds in this paper and all of the um the trees and the flowers and everything they're all water painted or water colored uh, so you've got that beautiful those beautiful soft watercolor tones really gorgeous and then there's this one. Oh my goodness, why is my paper not separating today? <laughs> and this is the, the reverse side. I'll turn it over so you can see a full sheet. We're using some of this one today. So I've done a lot of chop, chop, chopping with that one today. Got these cute little bluebirds here. And some beautiful fresh freesia with, it looks like a little bit of uh, Highland Heather through it as well. Again, more water colouring. Some bigger birds, some individual ones. These would be great for fussy cutting. And on the reverse side of that one, we've got some beautiful... Now, it says Calypso Coral, but because it's water coloured, it's really softened it down. And I tried some Calypso Coral with my project today, and it was just very heavy compared to um, the other colours that I was using. However, if you were using, say, one of these birds here they would go with the Calypso Coral um, cardstock because they've got the, the deeper colours, whereas this is sort of like watered down with the water colouring. Although you've got the, the Calypso Coral might go with these flowers because you've got a little deeper tone in some of these flowers. But, um, but the colours in the packet are Boho Blue, Bubble Bath, Calypso Coral, Crumb Cake, Daffodil Delight, Flirty Flamingo, Fresh Freesia, Garden Green, Lost Lagoon, Misty Moonlight, Pecan Pie, and Soft Sea Foam. So there's lots and lots of colours in that designer series paper. You get 12 sheets. So you get um, two sheets of each double-sided design. So that is what we are creating with today. That's our main um, focus for our project. We're also going to be using some of the stylish shape dies. We're going to be using some squares today. And the other new project uh, products we're going to be using are from the oops, are from the mini catalog. And this one I haven't used yet. I've opened it to have a look. As you can see, my Brea is still brand new in the plastic bag. But this is the now let me find the name. Oh, it's on here. The Thoughtful Moments Hybrid Embossing Folder. I'll tell you where to find it in the catalogue. Um, on page 18 of the mini catalogue. So it's this one here. So here it is here. Okay, and you can find it in the listing over here. And you've got your brayer as well. So this one's really interesting because you can die cut the words um, but you can also ink the embossing folder to give you this kind of look with the, the words as if you've actually stamped it and then die cut it, but you're actually using an embossing folder and a die and a brayer. So we're going to have a play with that today and see how, how that looks. Here's the embossing folder. So you've got lots of great um, sentiments on there. We'll have a look on the folder. They'll be easier to see. It's got thank you, hello, oh happy day, thinking of you, love you, you make me happy, get well, with sympathy, celebrate, and just because. So there's lots of sentiments there for lots of different occasions. There's the um, the dies. I'll take them out of the packet. We're going to be using them anyway. So I haven't taken um, haven't taken a photograph of these yet. So. I'm going to hold this up so I can get myself a screenshot later of how the dies go back on here because 
this, all the words are one big die, but then you've got all these little dies as well. So you've got little leaves, flowers, a little um, rainbow, some hearts, another rainbow, some more clouds, some more stars, more clouds, more flowers. So you've got lots of extra little um, elements there that you can use as well. And so I'm going to show you how that how that works when we come to use it with our brayer and um, our dies. Now, as I said, I haven't played with this yet, but I've seen how to use it. And I haven't used a rubber brayer for many, many years. I did a lot of work with the foam brayers that Stampin' Up! used to carry. Um, and we even had Technique Club with that. But let's open this up now. But a rubber brayer, I pulled out my old rubber brayer on the weekend to see um, to see the difference. And this one's actually um, bigger and it needs a bit of a wipe over, so I'll wipe it before we use it. And the great thing about this brayer too is it's got little feet. So you stand it up on your desk on the little feet and then you won't get the ink. Oh, look, I got a thumbs up bubble. Did you see that? It picked up my thumb and it gave me a thumbs up bubble. Did you see that just pop up on the screen? <laughs> um, yeah, so then when you put your brayer down on your desk, if you put it down with the feet side down, then you're not going to get that ink on your, your desk. So, yeah, lots of different techniques you can use with a rubber brayer. So I'm going to be playing with some of those. I just haven't had a chance to yet, um, but I will show you though some of those over time. But today will be the first time I'll play with it with an embossing folder. All right. Now... I have a project here that inspired my card for today, but um, I'll show you the card first and then I'll explain. So this beautiful card was given to me a while ago from one of my lovely team members, um, Beverly, and uh, Bev gave me this card because she had been unwell and I had sent her a, um, a, a get well card while she was unwell. And then when she was better, she sent me this to thank me. So isn't that just so cool? It's So it's a fun fold, and then you've got that pop-up in the middle. Just so pretty. And then we've got a, um, a panel on the back. I'll hold my hand there because she's written a little message. We've got a panel on the back there to, um, to write on. So now this one that Bev made is a larger card. It's much taller and it's wider, so it doesn't fit in a standard envelope. So Amber, very kindly today, rejigged all of the measurements to make it into a standard size um, card and we're going to be using that beautiful designer series paper that I just showed you um, to create this card. Now I've prepared a lot of the steps ahead of time to save time. I'm not sure I Oops. understand. Go away Siri. <laughs> Let's just um, mute that. Okay there we go good. All right so this is the template, okay? So Amber's done all the measurements for me. I was gonna do it when I got up today. <clears throat> she got up before me and before I'd even had a chance to, um, by the time I got out of the shower and come downstairs, she'd already done it all. So I was so thankful because it saved me a lot of time. So this is how it looks. I've got, she's written all the measurements. Now I will go through them all of the pieces and the measurements, but don't panic if you miss them because I'm going to put them all on my blog. Okay, so you'll find it um, hopefully by tomorrow in the next couple of days anyway, um, it'll be on my blog. So I've got some other things I need to do tonight as well. So we'll see if I get this done. So at the moment, all of these layers are just blue tacked down so that I can lift them up and get each of the measurements off each one but this is kind of the template so there's lots and lots of layers because we've got the base then we've got a layer then another layer then a layer then another layer and we've got the same layers in here then we've got this extra piece which forms the the pop-up and then we've got the back layers and then there's going to be an extra layer on the back for writing your message okay so let's get going um and Yep, all good. All good, Brian. No worries at all. Yep. Yeah, disregard what I said earlier because the products are currently available now. <laughs> so it's all good. All right. So this beautiful designer series paper from the mini catalog, the Flight and Airy. I keep forgetting the name of it. So you're definitely going to need a paper trimmer with this. 
Now I've also used my dies for die cutting the birds, but if you don't have the stylish shaped dies or a set of um, square dies, you can actually just cut these with your paper trimmer just into a square, okay? So don't worry too much if you haven't got the dies. The dies just make it so much quicker to, to um, cut out the, the animals, uh, the birds. So I used the, um, I'll take these out of the packet. You can see I keep all of my extra little pieces because they do come in handy. So this is the stylish shape dies. And I've used the um, third from the smallest. It's actually also the third from the largest. So it's the third size square to die cut the birds out of the designer series paper. So I'll show you again which sheet I used. And I just chose three. Oh, it is actually that one that I've got on top. So it's this sheet here. Okay, let me move those out of the way. Move that over. So it's this sheet here. And so I die cut. So what I did is I fussy cut around them first with my paper snips, hence why I've got one piece of DSP that's all choppy chop chopped because I just cut around the ones that I wanted first. I measured my, my die around each individual image first and then just, I actually, what I did, I put that down onto my designer series paper. I then took some of my um, my post-it tape, or this isn't post-it brand, it's it's a cheapy brand, I don't remember what brand it was, um, but my sticky label um, tape, and I just taped that down. Then I took my, um, my paper snip scissors, and I just cut around that with a little bit of a border, and then I ran that piece through my die cutting machine. I did, I worked out which ones I wanted, so I did all three of them um, at once. And then I was able to run them through um, the die cutting machine. So the ones I chose was, um, oh, I've got the other one here. I chose these ones here. I've got this little guy over here. And this one here, which was down here. Okay, so this one, these ones, this one. But you can use any ones that you like, just which whichever ones you prefer. Um, you just won't be able to get your dies necessarily around two that are really close unless you plan it really well. Um, what you could do, here's an idea. I didn't think to do this. You could die cut one of these just in cardstock and just use it as a template and then lay it over the top to work out your positioning of your, um, cause you're kind of cutting it out like a diamond, um, position them to work out what's going to fit on your, um, around your dies because you need space around your dies to be able to cut. Does that make sense? Yeah, so if you had a little template, you could put your little template. I've probably got one actually. Oh, look, I can use one of these paper ones that Amber cut. Amber cut some of these. See, you can just lay them over the top. And then if you had a couple of them, you could lay them next to each other to see which ones you can, um, which ones you can um, die cut. Yep. All right, so they're the three that we've got. That's the die. So I've explained that. I did those ahead of time to save time. All right, and then I chose, oops, this one. Let me find the big full sheet of it. Hang on a second. This one. This one, the reverse side of this one is going to be the floral paper that the birds are going to be sitting on, okay? So they, these little birdies, they go so well with this paper. Kind of lose them here, but we are going to have a layer behind them, okay? So when you put a little layer behind them just to create a little border or a little frame around them, they pop then off the paper, okay? But we're not using that much paper anyway, so... Yeah. All right. So that's what we're using. So you know what we're using. Now, let me give you all of these measurements. Hang on, I'll put my post-it tape over there. 
I'll give you all of the pieces. And as I said, these measurements will all be on my blog. So don't worry too much. Um, now I'm going to take out my template so I can make sure I give you all the correct um, measurements. Right. So you've got a standard card base. Okay. So 21 centimeters by 14.85. So it's half of an A4 sheet. You're going to score it in the middle as you would normally at 10.5 centimeters. Then you're going to make another score line at um, 5.25, I believe. Hang on a sec. Yep, at 5.25. Okay, so this one is going to be folded across that way like you make a normal card. And then this one, I've actually scored that on the opposite side. So I've got the, the mountain fold on this side. So I flipped the cardstock over and then fold that back on itself okay so you kind of have that look okay then you're going to need some misty moonlight cardstock and you've got your designer series paper and we've already talked about the birds so we've got our three little birdies there we've got a piece of basic white for the back that's the piece that we're going to write on okay so that's our our writing panel there for the back and you'll see why you can't write on the inside of this card. Uh, this one is 10.1 centimetres by 14.45 centimetres. Okay, so that's the back panel. Then for, oh, you love this fun fold. Um, you've made it a couple of times in the original size. Oh, that's great, Brenton. Fantastic. It's a gorgeous fun fold. Yeah, it really is. It's really lovely. I've not made this one before. Today's my first time, so... You might be able to give me some tips if I if I need them along the way, but I think I'm I think I've got it all all good. All right, this piece is going to be for the inside in here, okay, and it should be the same as the one on the back. But let me just double check. It is. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me get the layers right. Yes, it is ten point one by fourteen point four five centimeters. Okay, so these are all metric measurements because we're working on an A4 card base. That is the, um, the metric measurement for Australia and the UK. All right, then we've got our big piece of designer series paper for the inside. And this piece is going to be 9.7 centimetres by 14.05 centimetres. Then we've got two strips for these two panels here. Okay, so it's going to be the front panel and then it's going to be that inside panel. These are 14 point, uh, sorry, 4.85 by 14.45. Then we've got two strips of the designer series paper, which are going to go on top. They are going to be 4.45 by 14.05. So we're doing a lot of half measurements here. <laughs> Bear with me. Then you're going to need three, three squares that are going to be the, the, mats, the mat layers for our, our birds. And they are going to be, I think they're 5.1 by 5.1. Let me check. Yep, 5.1 by 5.1 centimeters. So you need three of those, one for each of the birds. Let's lay those out there so you can see those. And you can see those layers. All right, and then this forms our mechanism for the pop-up, okay? So this piece here is five centimeters wide by 12.5 centimeters long. And then you're going to score it at 2.5, 5, 7.5, and 10. Okay? And then that is going to be folded around on itself to form a square or a cube or a... What, would, what do you call that? It's a something prism. It's a... Okay, maths people. What is that called? What is that shape when it's long, when it's elongated? A something prism. I'm hopeless with maths. Oh my goodness. Um, so that's going to form our mechanism, which is going to go flat um, 
to rectangular prism. Oh, okay. Well, I was close. <laughs> rectangular prism. That's going to go um, flat to form our mechanism in our card. Okay. So they are all the pieces that you need. As I said, this will all be on my blog. So I'm not going to go over them again. Let me just take a sip of water. Oh, thanks, Julie. Hi, Helen. How are you? Oh, yes. This paper is gorgeous, isn't it? All right, so that's already all done. The only thing I haven't done is the sentiment and we're gonna do that at the end. So we are going to do all of the layers on here. Now, the sentiment layer for the back, I'm not gonna adhere that yet because I might decide to stamp a sentiment on there, on the back. And I don't wanna adhere that first before I do that because there's gonna be a lot of bulk on here. So I'm gonna put this one aside in my little baggie. By the way, can I just say, do you all use, or, or ask, do you all use the um, clear envelopes? Have you seen these clear envelopes in the catalogue with all of the envelopes? These are from the annual catalogue, or you can find them in the online store. I highly, highly recommend using these when you are mailing your cards. You pop your card into one of these clear, they're like a cello envelope. You pop your finished card into one of these clear cello envelopes, seal it. It's got a um, it's got a little seal on there. Just pull the the protection off there, and then seal it, and then put it into a normal envelope. And what will that will do is that will protect your card when it's going through the mail from ev from any um, moisture, rain, etc., etc. I've received so many cards I can't tell you that were not popped into a clear envelope and they got wet in the mail and they got totally ruined and it's so sad every time that happens because i know the um the time and effort and love that people have put into their projects only for them to get damaged in the rain or the bad weather so please please look out for these clear medium envelopes that's what they're called clear medium envelopes if you go to the um Stampin' Up! website or go to my online store, just put in the, the top search bar, clear medium envelopes, or just put clear envelopes. They'll come up and grab yourself a packet of those. I think you get, uh, 40, is it 40 or 50 in a pack? So they last for ages, but they are awesome and they protect your beautiful projects because you don't want your beautiful work um, being ruined with the weather. All right, let's put some of these layers together. Oh, you use them all the time, Brenton? Fantastic. Yep, with your finished cards. Protects them from the dust as well. Yes, until you send them. That's another great tip. Thank you so much, Brenton. Yes, all of my cards that I create, they go into those bags and I do um, I do store mine in those as well until I send them. Um, as you probably saw when I pulled this one out, it's already in a clear envelope ready to, um, to go. So, yep, all of my cards go into my clear envelopes. Diana agrees with the clear envelope. Yep, she said some of her Christmas... Oh, some Christmas cards arrived damaged um, as I did not use them last year. Oh, when you when you sent your Christmas cards last year, some of them got damaged. Oh, that's such a shame. Oh, so sad. Yes, definitely use your um, your clear envelopes. We learn by experience, don't we? And sometimes it's trial and error. Okay, so I didn't tell you what color my base is. My color base is actually petal pink because the flowers, because they're watercolored, the color is quite light. Even though they used Calypso Coral, they watered it down so it became quite light. Um, so I've gone with the petal pink, which I, I felt went better. Now, when I first put these colors together, you might think, oh, that is disgusting. That's not going to look any good. But just wait till the end. When you see all of the layers and you see the birds on here, it's going to look great. Okay, but at first, Misty Moonlight on top of Petal Pink is sort of like, wow, that's a very strong colour on a very soft colour. And some people may not like that, but just stick with me and wait and see. Now I'm trying to work out, do these flowers go a particular way? Let's see, do they have a direction? Mm, kind of like them up that way. 
All right, so I'm just using my multi-purpose liquid glue. I love my multi-purpose liquid glue because it gives me that wiggle time. Oh, I think this one just ran out. It's okay. I've got another one waiting in the wings. Um, it gives me the, me that wiggle time to position things um, in the right spot before the glue dries. With the dryer adhesives, usually once you've glued it down, um, it's stuck. Just when you're using your glue, though, just go in a little bit from the edges. Don't take your glue all the way to the edges because it does ooze when you put it down. It spreads out and you don't want it sort of oozing all over your, all out the sides of your um, project. Sometimes it happens if I go a little bit too close by accident, but I try not to. I try to keep it in from the edges a little bit. And then once you smooth it out, it'll smooth out to the edges. There we go. Isn't that paper just so pretty? All right, we're going to do all of these layers first. Oh, this one doesn't feel like it's got much in it either, actually. I think we had two going at once. I think Amber and I both both must have been using it at one stage. So we had two bottles of glue open. Generally, we try to just use one at a time. All right, so we're just going to pop all these layers in these different panels. Try and make sure they're lined up. Nicely. We should have a little two millimeter border around each of those layers. And then this one's going to be the front layer. So thank you so much, Bev. If you are watching this back on the replay, thank you so much for um, the idea for this card. And that card that Bev sent to me was quite a while ago. And um, when I get special cards like that, I hang well. I hang on to all of my handmade cards. I'm, I have a, I have many boxes. I was going to say I have a big box of them. I actually have many boxes of handmade cards that have been given to me, um, because I don't like to throw them out ever. People have put so much time and effort into creating them, and um, yeah, they're very special, and especially if they've got a special message in them too. But when they are ones that I think, wow, I want to recreate that or that's given me an idea for another project, I keep them aside in my ideas box. And so Bev's one was sitting in my idea, ideas box since she gave it to me. So I'm glad that I finally get to create with it and this paper was just perfect. How pretty. See, now the colours are starting to work together, aren't they? Uh, which way up is this one going to go now? That way, that way, that way. The flowers kind of go every which direction. I don't think it really matters which way they go. I'm going to do it that way. Yeah. Hey, Glenda, how are you? How was your weekend? Did you do anything exciting on the weekend? And how was everybody else's weekend? I've only heard about um, Brenton so far. Nobody else, I don't think, has commented. Did anybody else comment about their weekend? Did I miss it? Let me know what you did on the weekend. Did you do anything exciting? My husband's been busy digging drainage out under our um, front lawn near our garden because our garden floods see look look at that isn't that beautiful you know what this reminds me of it reminds me of one of those old-fashioned um dressing screens you know those screens they used to have where you um they in the olden days where the ladies would go behind to get changed and they usually have one in their bedroom it reminds me of it kind of reminds me of one of those it's really pretty really really pretty Oh, now I've got little bits of glue. Hang on, that's coming off my fingers. All right, let me put that in my glue holder to get the glue running down. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's layer up our birdies, our cute little birdies. Oh, these, these ones are going to have a finer border. So I'm just going to grab a scrap of paper to put underneath in case... I get any oozy glue if I get a bit excited with my glue and I go a bit closer to the edge. 
Now remind me, I've got to pull out my ribbon and my bling. I don't know if I'm going to use it. Oh, bling, definitely. I'm not sure if I'm going to use ribbon, but I will grab it out just in case. So Bev's card that she gave me, the original, didn't have any ribbon on it. But I'm just thinking, I wonder if I can sneak some ribbon in somewhere because, you know, I love my ribbon and my bling. There we go. So these ones have got a much finer border. That is not a two millimeter border. Um, not actually even sure of the size of the border. It's like a mil or half a mil. It's like one millimeter. Okay, so there's one. Not a lot of exciting things, Janelle. Um, you've had another flare up. Thankfully, it was only fatigue and sore bones. Oh, no, that's no good. The hematologist appointment is tomorrow, so we'll be letting them know what happened. It was, whoops, it was, just trying to read the rest of that. It was all about getting ready for school. I pushed through and grabbed the last little bits. Oh, no, that's not good. Oh, rest up. Take it easy. Hopefully you can have some time to put your feet up and just take it easy. Yeah, it's hectic getting all those last minute back to school things, isn't it? I remember those days. Thankfully you don't have to do them anymore. Actually, even when I was working, I would usually have to go and purchase things like for the office. And oh, I dreaded it because You'd go and there would just be, it would just be so busy and we had to find parking. And so I kind of avoid going to the stationery stores at this time of year now. I just wait until everyone's gone back to school and then I go if I need anything. <laughs> or I send hubby. <laughs> I'll let him fight the crowds. But no, I, I usually wait unless it's something urgent. But if it's, Usually if it's something urgent, it's something like copy paper or something that I can just get from the um, the supermarket these days. All right, so there's our little birdies. Oh, I'm getting hot. Hot, hot, hot. Okay, and now with this piece, so we're going to lay them over. Now what I just noticed is when I fold it that way, it buckles a little bit. If I fold it the other way it doesn't buckle so even if you wanted to snip a little bit off one end the end that's going to be on the inside you could or when you're laying it down flat to create your mechanism just make sure that that piece is like that way oh but then you know what that bit's going to be up that's going to show Ah, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab my snips and I'm actually just going to trim a little bit off that edge. And that's going to be my inside edge. You're not going to see it, so it's okay. I'm just going to take a little bit off that so that when that tucks on the inside, the cardstock is not touching on that um, fold line there. So then that way, it'll go flat that way and it'll go flat that way, okay? So just cut like a little slither, like just a little millimeter off that piece that's gonna be the inside. So that's the inside piece. That's the piece I'm gonna put my glue on. Now make sure you don't take the glue right to, the, um, to that fold line because you don't want it to get, you don't want it to go over onto this section. So I'm going to lay that down flat and then just close that over the top and give that a push. Oh man, I'm hot. Amber, if you are watching, is the air conditioning on in here, in this room? I'm sweltering. I'll grab my fan. This is my, this is my little fan that I keep handy. How pretty is it? It's getting a bit frayed, but um, this is my one I keep here beside my craft desk all the time and then when I get hot it gives the best fanning like better than any of those little you know those I've got a lot of those little um handmade wooden um fans which I carry I always have a fan with me everywhere I go but this one I don't know I think it's just the fabric the fabric just gives a better a better fanning 
and it was like the girls gave me this for Christmas one year just as a little stocking fill. It was like $2 at the $2 shop or something. And it's the best fan. It even fell apart recently and I put it together with a um, paper clip. <laughs> just the um, pin came out of it. It broke. So I tied it together with a, with a paper clip because it's just the best. All right, there we go. So there we've got our little, our little rectangular prism. Okay. Good. So there's all our pieces. Now, we can put this part of the card together and then we can, oh, you know what? I should maybe try the ribbon first and see. These parts here, they don't have anything in them. If you wanted to, you could do layers there too. Just know that the more layers that you put on your card, the thicker it's going to make it. Um, and when you go to post it, keep that in mind as well because if it gets too bulky, then you know it's going to cost you more in in postage um but i'm just going to leave those plain because that's going to fold back on itself anyway so i'm not too worried about that i'll just have a look, a look at bev's bev actually did put when she made hers she did put um she put some on that panel there okay so just on that one there so I guess if you're if you're posting it and you're posting it flat it will it will flip over flat like that if you want to mail it like that then you can put paper on there or if you plan to mail it that way which is probably how I will mail it um, then you don't really need the paper in there it's up to you you can do whatever you like so all right let me grab the ribbon and the bling brand new ribbon haven't even opened this one yet so don't know don't know don't know if the colors are going to go actually but we'll see I'm grabbing all the bling I've got three boxes of bling this is all the new bling from the new catalog and the celebration brochure these are all the ones from um, the annual catalogue and online exclusives, but I just thought I'd just grab all, the, all of them and we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, I don't know. This ribbon might not be the right colour because it's very, um, it is pool party. I was going to say it's very pool, par pool party-ish, like it's more of a, a greeny blue which some of the papers this would actually go with. And in the celebration brochure, they did use this with this designer series paper, but maybe not this particular one. And this is quite thick too. So it's probably going to be thicker than what we want. It's probably not going to go. It's beautiful ribbon though. Look at that. Look at the ruffle in that. So this is the pool party crinkle ribbon. This is free with, you can choose this as one of your free items with a $90 purchase from the celebration brochure. But yeah, it's kind of not gonna go with our um, project today, but that's okay. I wanted to have a look at it anyway and I hadn't opened it yet, so there you go. Now you've had a look at it with me too. It's really pretty. Should we try and tie a bow? Let's see how, the, how it ties. Sometimes the crinkle, the crinkle ribbon is a bit tricky to tie. Oh, no, not this one, though. This is really easy to tie. Gives you a big bow because it's quite a wide ribbon. Oh, that ties really easily. Beautiful. So it's um, 1.58 centimetres or 5 eighths of an inch. So there you go. So now you've had a look at that. But I think we're not going to use ribbon on this one, but we will definitely use bling. This ribbon actually matches with the um, the paper that Bev used. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get to putting this card together now. All right. So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to add my little mechanism in here. Now, we want to make sure that the where we've done the join there, that's going to be adhered down. Okay, so that's going to be adhered down. So we're, we're adhering this part, so that's the bottom, okay, and then the left side. But I'm just going to do the bottom, oh, sorry, yes, the left side. 
So when I fold that flat, it's going to be this piece here. Okay, so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, grab my ruler, I'm going to measure down at 4.95 from the top of the card, from the petal pink, down to the top of my little rectangular prism, my little pop-up, my little pop-up mechanism is going to be 4.95. Okay, so I'm going to put some glue on this first. Well, actually, let me let me get my ruler ready first. I'm going to, you can put a little pencil mark if you want to. 4.95. Hang on, let's move the ruler over here. 4.95. So it's going to need to go down about there. And then you should have 4.95 at the bottom as well. And down a little bit more. 4.95. Yeah, okay, so it's about there. And what you want to do is you want to have this so that when you adhere that, you're going to tuck it right into that corner, like right into the fold, okay? So it goes right into the fold um, so that it, you don't see that when your card is closed. Okay, all right, so get my ruler ready again. I'm going to put some glue on this piece here, the bottom piece. Making sure not to go past the fold line. Okay, using a liquid glue so we can wriggle it around. Okay, turn that back over. All right, now we want to go four point. Nine five down a bit lower, four point nine, four point nine five. It's about there. We'll measure that again just to be sure. Four point, yep. Now, the reason that's uh, this is really important is because, oh, well, you'll see why in a minute. All right, so while that glue is still wet. I'm going to push that in to the core, to the edge. Push that right in with this closed. Make sure that goes all the way in. Okay. And then, now because you've got the layers, it is going to be in just a little bit from the fold, but that's good because you want that to be able to fold over the top. Okay. Once you get that piece down, once you get that bit down glued, the next step is easy. We're going to put some glue onto this panel here on the left side. Hope I'm doing this right, Brenton. <laughs> oh, maybe some navy colored twine would be nice. Yeah, that could be nice too, Julie. I'll have to have a look and see what I've got in my box. All right, so glue, glue, glue. All right, and then we are just going to close that over. Hold that there for a moment. You can even close it all the way up. The reason I had that folded back was to make sure that it was tucked all the way in and I couldn't see it. And let's see. Yes, good. All right, and then just give... Open it up and give it a little back rub, as Connie Stewart would say. There we go. Beautiful. Good. So now when you stand the card up, you've got that rectangular prism there like that. Okay. So the card won't open all the way up because you've got that, that piece there. Okay. That inhibits it from opening all the way up, but it's not meant to. It's meant to stand up like that. Okay. All right, and now we're going to add our little birdies. So I want my two birdies on the inside. In fact, we might do them first. We might do them first. No, I'm going to do these outside two first, and then we'll line up that one in the middle. All right, so I want this little one at the top and this little one at the bottom. And we're going to line them up so that... The um, the, la the matte layer, the, 
the bo uh, the, sorry I was gonna say boho blue was it boho blue no misty moonlight misty moonlight is on the edge of the misty moonlight layer on this piece here okay and we're gonna have the tips of the diamonds on the edge of the misty moonlight okay so and they're going to be one at the top one at the bottom and there's just going to be that almost going to touch in the middle okay now make sure that you only put glue on this side we don't want any glue on this side because this is hanging over the bottom panel we don't want to stick that down so the best way to do that is to flip it over upside down okay so right way up just flip it straight over like that line it up where it's going to sit so you can see where you're going to put your glue okay so we're just going to put it on the inside there like that flip it back over make sure that's right yep <laughs> And we're just going to line that up there. Oops. Line that up there. Line that up there. Come on. There we go. Okay. And press that down. Now, when you open that, you shouldn't have any glue on that section there. Okay. And just push that down nice and firm. And then we're going to do the same with the other one. So flip it over, line it up where it's going to go so we can see where to add our glue. Oops. Down there, across the triangle. Add a bit more this time. The more glue you add, um, the slipperier the piece is to be able to move it into position. But the more chance you have of it oozing. So if you're going to add a lot of glue, don't add it close to the edges. Because otherwise it's going to ooze. We don't want oozy glue. So we've just got a little tiny gap between, about a two millimetre gap between the two triangles, which is great because, all right, there we go. Because what we're going to do now is this little one is going to go in the middle between those two. Okay, so we'll do the same. We'll flip this over, work out where that's going to line up. Now, this time we haven't got as much space to glue because it's got to be within that edge of your little mechanism there. Okay, so line it up, flip it over. It's a bit hard to see where that edge is, so I'm just going to go in and just do in that corner. like that okay flip that over now to line that up what you can do is you can close your card and get that lined up between these two here okay so it might need to come down just a little fraction let's see this is the trickiest part i think is getting this one lined up that looks pretty good yep and then just give that a little press and there shouldn't be if you have a look behind there there shouldn't be any glue extending out beyond your mechanism it's kind of a bit hard to see if I hold it up that way maybe you can see that way okay so there shouldn't be any glue on that part of the mechanism and you can put your fingers inside the mechanism to just push that piece down I've got a little bit of excess glue just there and so that that doesn't stick what I'm going to do got a little bit because I slid it down I moved it on there what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my um, embossing buddy from my embossing kit and I'm just going to dab that on to take away that sticky did you know that that's another use for your embossing buddy have you done that it just takes off the sticky there we go all right so then when you open your card it's like that isn't that just so pretty Now you don't want to force the card any further open than what it will, what it feels like natural for it to go, because you've got all of these layers, and then you've got this attached. It's sort of out from 
like it doesn't sit right in that edge right right in that fold so it just kind of sits like that okay so it shouldn't open all the way and if you force it to open all the way what it's going to do is it's going to lift this paper these layers and it's going to damage the card okay but you don't want to do that so there we go all right now so as i said you've got the extra layer oh thank you brenton thanks fee um um i have after seeing you do that sorry i don't understand wait um, did i miss the first part um julie said maybe some navy colored twine yep this looks beautiful i have after seeing you do that i'm not sure what that means i have after seeing you do that did i miss something I'm not sure. So this is your writing panel for the back. Now, if you wanted to, um, I mean, you could write on there if you wanted to, but you would see it when the card is closed. So it do, it wouldn't look nice to have writing on there. That's why it's good to have the, the writing panel for the back of the card. Okay. So let's add some bling. Oh, with the embossing buddy, you know. Oh, yes, that tip. You know now after seeing me do that yes yeah it's a it's a handy little tool that embossing buddy all right so let's add some bling now you could add ribbon somewhere if you wanted i'm sure you could probably squeeze ribbon in somewhere or maybe a bow um somewhere here you know what would look nice actually is just some linen thread might look nice um but yeah, I think I'm just going to leave that plain for now because we've still got to do our sentiment and we've got to add our bling as well. Actually, let's do the sentiment first and then we'll do the bling. So that's the main part of the card. Um, how are we going for time? Oh, it's 5.30 already. Oh, my goodness. Where does that time go? Okay, so I'm going to give my, um, my brayer a little bit of a clean with my chamois. Now, I cleaned my chamois today. I'm just going to run this across sideways to just clean off any lint from the brayer. There we go. I think that got rid of all of that. There's another bit. Okay. All right. Now, as I said, I haven't used this yet, so I'm excited to have a go with you. So because I just wet that, I'm going to dry it off. So I'm going to turn it off, turn it over with the feet facing up. And I'm just going to run it on the paper just to dry that brayer. Make sure there's no ink on there before I use it on my, um, on my ink pad. Okay, so you're going to need the large stamp and cut and emboss machine for this. Now, anyone who didn't see me show this at the beginning, this is the Thoughtful Moments Dies. And they work together with the Thoughtful Moments hybrid embossing folder. You can use them. Um, you can use the embossing folder just on its own. But the dies do coordinate with this. All right. So the sentiment that I had chosen. Well, actually, we'll do them all. I'll just take this, the dies off the die sheet first. Very carefully. I think this one definitely needs to go onto a magnetic sheet because this is one big die with lots of little tiny ones that I don't want to lose. You know what? Actually, before I take that off there, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, where is my fine tip Sharpie? I'm going to take my fine tip Sharpie. And I am, because I haven't taken a photo. Normally I take a photo. This is the, my old method. My new method is actually taking, not a photo, I take a, um, I scan it. I scan my dies before I remove them from the paper backing. And then that way I've got um, a copy of how they lay on the paper and how they all fit so that I can put them back in and have them all fit properly because sometimes you know with some of the dies it's like oh how did they all go again how do I fit these all on this sheet 
So this is my old method. There we go. So I just need that around the outside. The little ones don't matter too much at the moment because I'm not going to be taking any of them off today. Okay, there we go. There's our big one. We'll leave all those little tiny ones on there. I'll put that over at the side. Now, before I ink this up, what I'm going to show you is how this lays on here. Hang on, I've got to work out which way it goes. This way, I think. Yep, that's it. All right. So what you'll do is you'll, you'll put your cutting side down on the side of the embossing folder that feels like it's raised. Okay, so if you feel the embossing folder, one side is going to be raised. The other side is going to be sort of have the image depressed into it. So if you see where the Stampin' Up! logo is on the folder, you're going to put the dies on the opposite side. Why did I just get balloons? And they went down, not up. That was interesting. It's <laughs> because I did that. I don't know. Why did I get... Well, I don't know why balloons just went across my screen then. That was so weird. Anyway. All right, so then that's going to go in there and you're going to feel it sort of lock in around those words. So it's going to emboss the cardstock as well as cut them out. Um, now, we could do all of them. I need a bigger piece of um, paper. So you can do all of them at once or you can just choose just to do one of the sentiments and just use a smaller piece of cardstock. But you do need to put the whole die plate through if you want to do it this way okay um, I mean either way you need to put the whole die plate through let me just grab some more cardstock hang on a sec I got my scraps out because I was thinking I was just going to die cut um, a small just like one sentiment but I thought I probably should show you how to do all of them Alrighty. Now, as I said, I haven't done this before, so I hope I'm going to do it right. If anyone has, if anyone has um, already used this, then feel free to call out if I'm doing it wrong. Um, I'm going to grab some grid paper first. There we go, just because we might get a bit messy here. And we're going to use some Misty Moonlight um, ink. And I'm just thinking, just trying to work out which side do we ink. Do we ink that side or that side? I think we ink that side, don't we? Let me wait, 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 wait. Let me work this out. Let me work this out. Yeah, it has to go. The die has to go that way. So that's going to be the right side up. I think you might be able to do either, actually. I think you can do either. I'm going to do it on this side. We'll see how we go. Um, oh, you've used yours? So far using it the same as I did. Oh, so far. Okay, so should I ink that side or that side then? Because I'm just thinking, if you ink that side, you're going to get the whole word coloured. Whereas you, if you ink that side, you're just going to get the outline coloured. The side with the logo, Kelly says. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Kelly, too. All right, let's see. Let's see how we go. All right. Now, when you're inking up your brayer, um, because the brayer is wider than your ink pad, um, and I'm going from memory of using my old ones years ago, because as I said, I haven't used the new one yet. The ink pad is wider than the brayer, um, so the way that you do it is you roll and then you lift up your, your brayer. So you're loading the ink and then just move it across. So you're not going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. You're rolling and lifting up. And this is going to get quite inky, I can see. Just trying to get an even even coverage of ink on my brayer. All right, let's see how we go. Okay, so then we're going to ink up our words. 
make sure you get an even coating. Oh, I am getting a bit of extra ink here and there. So we'll see how we go. All right. And then we're going to put our paper. Wait, I put my paper down this side, right? Or I put my dies on first? <laughs> Which way? Which way am I doing this? Oh, it has to go this way. It has to go that way, then that way. Wait, that's not going to work. That's not going to work if I put my paper in there. Do I put my paper on there? But then that's not going to cut that out, is it? Have I done that wrong? Oh, wait. Or do I do it this way and then I die cut? Is that the other way you can use them? I'm really not sure now. Dies go where there is ink. Oh, so they go on that side, that way. Ah, okay. I was doing it the wrong way. Thanks, Kelly. There we go. Ah, oh, yes, it locks straight in. <gasps> Thank you, Kelly. Perfect. Okay, so dies on there. And then cardstock over the top, right? Oh, thank you. I'm glad I've got you here. I would have done that the wrong way. So I was thinking, wait, that's not looking right. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Now we need to run that through the die cutting machine. Ooh, I've got ink everywhere over here. Hang on a sec. I've got to hold this. I'm just going to move the, uh, the card because I don't want to get ink on that. I'm still holding this. <laughs> okay. Now, I haven't tested which plates I need either. I'm guessing I just use the grey one. Is it the grey one? I should have checked that, shouldn't I? I should have tested this. Let's see. All right. Let's see if this is going to go through. It's going to go through. Is it too tight? Might be too tight. Maybe I just need the, the clear plate. Which plate do you use on top, Kelly? Or Brenton? Do you use the the um, one of the clear ones or the grey one? I feel like that's just going to go through. That's that's not going to cut. Hang on, might need to work out which plates. I really should have tried this before I uh, filmed this, shouldn't I? I'll try my, this is my um, number two plate. I'll try that one in there as well. Oh, it is the gray one, Kelly. Okay. Kelly says the gray plate. Okay, it was just a bit tight, so I didn't want to force it in case I broke it. Uh -huh. Oh no, where am I doing that one? Not that one, gray plate. Here we go. There we go. All right. Okay, let's go. Oh, yep, it's going. It's just very tight. Wow, it's really tight because it's embossing and it's cutting at the same time. So just take it easy. Oh, I've got it to that point and now it's stuck. One and four. I do have it on one and four. It's not wanting to go past there. Oh. Hang on, I'm going to back out. Very, very tight. Unless I don't have something lined up properly. One and four. Okay, let's have a look. I've got, yeah, I've got one and four. I didn't put anything extra in between, did I? And I've got the embossing folder and the dies and the cardstock. Right? Is that right? Oh, you've got this one too, Glenda. The die next to my card. Yep. Die goes where the ink is. 
Do I am first? Yep. Oh, hi, Vicky. Just saw you jumped on. Yeah, it didn't want to go through. It got it got part way, and then it didn't want to go the rest of the way through. Unless should I have had it, should I have the dies face down, perhaps? Is the die locked in? Um, I thought it was. Maybe the die didn't lock in properly. Hang on a sec. Ah, now I've, I might have to start again. Maybe it jumped out. Maybe that's why. No, it's locked in. It is definitely locked in. It did cut out some of them. I just didn't get all the way through though. Whoop, got ink everywhere. We've got some of them cut out. Oh, happy day. Okay. So first attempt did not go as planned, but it did, it did um, emboss and die cut some of them. Can you, question is, can you emboss the words first and then die cut them? I mean, I know with the, these ones, you're supposed to be able to do it all at once, but yeah, that's definitely in. It's definitely in the right spot. It just didn't want to go through. That's weird. And that's ordinary cardstock. That's not thick. It's with sympathy. I did get some of them that worked. Hmm. I don't know why it didn't go through all the way. That was weird. Um, does it say on the packet which plates to use? Good question. Let me have a look. Um, Harry Rob says that hybrid embossing folders are three-in-one product. Do you have the option to use embossing folder on the die as separate tools or use them at the same time? Okay, so you can use them separately or you can use them together. Embossing tip folder... Um, with the dent design, you might see some cracks on the embossing. Oh, embossed on the cardstock. Hang on. Some cracks on the embossed cardstock of paper to prevent this. Break the fibres in the cardstock before embossing, blah, blah, blah. Die tips. Yeah, no, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you which plates to use it with. Well, there you go. I might need to have more of a play with that. And show you next time it doesn't actually tell me on here it probably should in the catalog though shouldn't it let's have a look let's have a look because i've never used a hybrid embossing folder before this was my first one i've never bought one before so they've always intimidated me a little bit and this is why <laughs> Um, used with stamp and cut and emboss machine, one embossing folder. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. No, it doesn't say. Use a stamp and brayer to ink the logo side of the embossing folder. Yes, thank you, Kelly. You you got me on the right track there. Then add the dies. Yes, Brenton and Kelly, you got me on the track there. But yeah, it didn't go all the way through. Maybe my um I wonder if my um my rollers are tight maybe it was my rollers can i die cut them then brayer after can you die cut them then use the brayer to color after try a shim yeah i might need a shim i think jenny um you can do it separately yeah i think that's what i might do is i might do it separately oh now i've got ink everywhere that's okay. All right, what I'm going to do is I will have more of a play with this. I'll use the ones that I've already got because I think the one that I wanted has um, has die cut anyway. And as I said, I didn't want to push it because I didn't want to cause any damage to it. But I will have more of a play and then I'll show you again next week when I know what I'm doing because I don't want to I don't want to break anything. All right, so give all that a wipe with a baby wipe. And yeah, sometimes because every um, every embossing machine, cutting, cutting of an embossing machine has different tension on the rollers and some can be very tight and some can be quite loose. So that can affect how, um, 
how your paper rolls through or how your, your dies roll through. And um, I'm thinking maybe mine are just really tight. All right, so I'm just wiping, cleaning this with um, some baby wipes. If I was not filming, I would go to my sink and just run this under the sink. That's how I usually clean them if I've inked them because um, I've done inking techniques with embossing folders before, just not with dies, not with um, hybrid dies. There we go. Okay, so that's all clean. I'll just set that aside to dry and I'll clean up my fingers and the brayer as well. The brayer has, is full of ink now too. So we'll just give that a wipe with the baby wipe first and then I might give it a go with the um, chamois. I'll just get the majority of the ink off first with, I want to do, I want to practice some um, brayering techniques and do some more brayering techniques with you one day. But as I said, I haven't had a chance up until this point because it's been crazy, crazy busy. Let's wipe my hands with this too while I'm here. Now I've got blue ink everywhere. <laughs> this a clean oh that looks pretty good now I think let's see yeah nice and clean well it was easy to clean so that's good the brayer is easy to clean my fingers not so much my fingers are still a bit messy but that's okay don't they say um oh Brenton said I know it's written somewhere because I remember reading it as I was unsure also um, I wonder if it's on the demonstrator website, Brenton. I might have to go and search for it. Can you die cut them then? Oh, yeah, I read that one before. Can you die cut them then use the brayer to add the colour? Um, I think, yes, I think I would brayer first, emboss, then die cut. I think I'd do it that way, Glenda, according to, to what I just learnt just then. <laughs> All right, we will come back to that. However, we did get some that worked. So um, I think my brayering still needs a little bit of practice because I've got some inconsistency here with my, my colour, but that's okay. Um, actually, the Just Because I think was the one that I was going to maybe use, but it's... Oh, we could use Oh Happy Day. But yeah, these have got... You can't see it probably on camera, or you can if I turn it over backwards, upside down, but you can see how it's embossed it. Um, and then you've got the inked outline as well from the brayering. So that's cool. Yeah. So I think once I master how to use this properly, then it'll be fantastic. So I will definitely come back and, um, and show you that once I've mastered it. Not today, though. I'll show you next week. All right. So let's have a look now and see. I've got my... Oh, happy day will actually fit perfectly in there. Look at that. That'll, that's perfect for in there. Could do... Hello is probably a bit too big. Because that'll cover the, the other birdie on the inside there. Could put hello on the inside. Oh, you could put hello on the inside. Look. And you kind of see it sitting there. Yeah, I think we'll go with that one. You could even use... Thank you. Thank you would go in there too. My thank you is a little bit spotty. I think I hadn't inked it up quite right. It's a little bit spotty. So, yeah. Or celebrate. Celebrate will be too big. With sympathy would fit. But, yeah, I think we'll go with Oh Happy Day. Oh, happy day. All right, let's put some Stampin' Dimensionals on there. I'm using up some of my Stampin' Dimensionals left over from some of my kits. Do you all get left lots of Dimensionals left over from your kits? Make sure that you use them up. Just know that they are a bit um, higher. They sit a bit higher than our normal Stampin' Dimensionals. So if you are using more than... Um, if you're combining with, I'll get one of these mini ones. If you're combining with the normal Stampin' Dimensionals, just know that they are a little bit higher. So you might want to, um, actually that, even that one's higher than those ones. 
I'll just trim that one, I think. Um, yeah, so kind of it's probably not a good idea to mix and match with the standard dimensionals and the ones out of the kits because these ones are always higher. There we go. All right. Um, oh, Julie said just had a look in the catalog regarding the brayer and it says using the stamp and brayer to ink the logo side of the embossing folder then add the dies yep thanks julie yeah that's what um kelly and brenton were saying too so i think i just need a bit more practice but it's good to play with these new toys and see see how they work and see um you know what we need to master i need to obviously play a little bit more to master how to use them is that straight there we go yeah oh that looks good on there that's that fits perfectly actually that oh happy day let's move that grid paper all right let's find some bling now let's see what bling we have we've got some iridescent foil gems Got petal pink and pretty peacock foil gems. Petal pink ones might be nice, but I think I more want to go with the um, the blues. Nope, not right. So these are some of the new embellishments, and some of these I've got left over from. Oh, these are the ones from the mini cut uh, from the celebration brochure. These are the opaque faceted gems, but I think the um. The pool party is a bit too bit too greeny blue for this one. So I think we might go back to my other packets or we might use these, we'll see. So let's have a look and see what we've got in the other packets. Actually, I'll lie that one down. Um, Kelly says, yes, I always play to get it right. You'll be great next time. Thanks, Kelly. I usually do as well. But today I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go for it and just wing it and yeah probably wasn't you know the best idea best laid best laid plans hey <laughs> it's okay it'll be more successful next time oh those ones will be nice faceted gems trio pack they might be nice so many to choose from now they're too blue they're butterflies we don't want butterflies stampin up has so many beautiful embellishments don't they the ombre matte decorative dots. Oh, I've only got two of those left. I don't have enough of them. And they're the wrong colour. Okay. Narrowing it down. Oh, thank you, Vicky. Did you see how it does the pop-up? Isn't that cute? So it sits like that. Um, we can always just go with our rhinestones. That's always my go-to... Oh, they might be pretty. These ones. They might be pretty, actually. So many choices, everyone. Stampin' Up! has just got such an amazing range of embellishments, haven't they? Iridescent rhinestones. They're always good. Iridescent pearls. Oh, pearls would be pretty, too. Uh, not those ones. Okay. So many to choose from. So let's see. The pearls I think would be really pretty. Those ones I think we'll lose. Those ones I like. They're my go-to. If ever I can't choose or I can't find the right colour of embellishment, I go back to my basic rhinestones because they just go with everything. I'm thinking now not these ones because I think they're we're going to lose the glitter in them. These ones perhaps could be nice. Hmm. I'll open these ones, but I don't think I don't think they're going to be the right colour. These ones I thought might go. Oh, we'll open them up and see. All right. So these ones are the faceted gem trio. So we've got. Um, I don't even know what colours these are supposed to be. This one looks more like pool party. This kind of looks like a, a greyish colour. And these are the silver ones. So let's take a silver one off and have a look. 
Oh, they'd be pretty on there. But we only have the one size. That's the only thing. Um, they might be nice. Might be a bit, a bit bulky, maybe. I don't know. There's those. Um, and I think either those, these ones, or the pearls. I think pearls are always delicate and pretty, aren't they? Let's see. Oh, we've got two sizes in these. I've got, well, actually, there was three, but I've used up the the third size. Maybe those ones would be nice as well. Not together, but. Yeah, I think I prefer those to these ones on this card. Whoop. Okay, so put that one back. Or pearls. Oh, you have to go back and watch from the beginning, Vicky. Yes, definitely. To see how I um, created the the fold. Oh, I do like the pearls on there. Yeah, I think I'm going to go pearls. I think I'll take this one back off. So whenever you're putting your embellishments on, always just sit them on gently so that if you change your mind, you can take them back off. All right. I'm going to go with the pearls. Pearls are always pretty. Okay, so let's go large pearl, small pearl up there and then we'll put I might put one over here and we'll put a couple on here as well let's see we might go here near the sentiment and and this is a take your pick tool if you haven't seen this before this is a take your pick tool and it's a it's a multi-purpose tool that has um, one, two, three, four, five. That's five. Oh look, you could go crazy with the um the bling on this one. You really could, because there's so much space to be able to put it. Um yeah, so this is a multi-purpose tool. There are lots of different tools in this one. So you've got a spatula, which I broke mine, but so I can't use mine, but it, it sits there. Um, you've got a pokey pokey tool, I like to call it, or paper piercing tool. You've got a putty end as well, which is great for picking up embellishments or sequins or small items. Um, small, you can even use it for picking up, you know, bits of cardstock or whatever. Um, and then it also comes with a stylus, which is dual tip. Plus, there's an extra set of tools now that you can get as well for um, the attachments, which is an extra fine um, pokey pokey tool. And there's a little hook tool and a um, perforator, perforating wheel, which is really cool. But anyway, there we go. So if you need any, if you have any questions about the take your pick tool, then feel free to ask me or about any of the other tools I've used today. And I will have another go with that hybrid embossing folder and I will master it and I will show you when I've mastered it. But there we go. So there we've got our beautiful card. We're going to have our, our white panel on the back for writing our message, but I will stamp that first. And we got to use um, one of the new um, sentiments as well from the mini catalog, which was from the... Thoughtful Moments. Is that the one? Thoughtful Moments? Yes. Thoughtful Moments embossing folder. Hybrid embossing folder, which Mandy is going to master. <laughs> so there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Julie. And thank you so much to Bev for her original card as well, um, which gave me the idea for this one. So you can see the difference in the size. So this is the original this is the original one, which doesn't fit in a standard size envelope. You'd need to buy, um, yeah, different.
different envelope, a different size envelope. Um, but this one will fit in a standard size. So there you go. So that's the big one. And that's my little one. And it's going to sit up on display like that. So there you go. All the measurements will be on my blog um, in the next couple of days. So look out for that. I will post in my Facebook page when the, um, my blog is ready. I usually have that done by Tuesday or Wednesday. Just depends on what else I've got to do. Oh, you said pearls, Julie. I'm just scrolling back on the comments. Yes, good choice. Yes, I think the pearls, they're very subtle and um, soft and pretty. Um, but yeah, as I said, if you want to add an extra ribbon, you could probably add a little bit of ribbon here or there. Maybe even on um, this image on the inside, perhaps. So that when you open it, you see a little bit of ribbon here. A little bit of baker's twine or linen thread. Linen thread would look nice too. White baker's twine might be nice also. You never know. I might add some. I'll see. I might have a little play afterwards and we'll see what I come up with. All right. The original card is five by seven. Okay. Oh, it probably is actually. Let me have a look, Brenton, if this one is one of the ones that's the original size or if it's, yep, five. Yeah, it would be by seven. Yeah, you're right. It is a five by seven. Oh, there you go. So Bev used the uh, the original measurements. So my little one is um, just a standard card size, which is your um, 10.5 by 14.85. So there you go. All right. Well, I'm going to tip the camera up so that I can say goodbye to you all face to face. So bear with me and I'll just cover up the camera while I get that repositioned. Okay. Tighten everything back up. Bear with me, I am coming back. I haven't gone. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I wish I had have worn my bird my bird brooch today and my bird earrings. Not that I have birds in that colour actually, but I did on the weekend I was wearing my um my little finch brooch, which is really cute. It's a little grey um finch. It's a white spotted white spotted diamond finch, white spotted something or other finch really pretty little little brooch so um there you go i'll show you up up a bit closer you can see that mm. isn't that cute yeah so i've got a little bit of uh a little bit of practice to do with my hybrid embossing folder but apart from that can you see the pearls on there too they're subtle they're quite subtle but really pretty but that paper is just stunning so yes, so you can get the designer series paper for free um, with a $90 purchase during celebration. Um, so that is the Flight and Airy 12 by 12 designer series paper. Now with any of the, um, where's my brochure? Hang on a sec, I'm finding my brochure. It's buried here somewhere. Ah, there it is. With any of the celebration items, um, they, so, so, Celebration runs until the end of February, but with any of the celebration items, it is while supplies last, and some of them are more popular. Like history tells me that some are more popular than others, and um, some can actually sell out before the end of celebration. So, if there are any that you love in here, then make sure that you um, pop an order in um, so that you can select your free items um, before they're all gone. And from what I've heard, this paper is one of the popular items. Just saying. Lots and lots of people have been raving about it and playing with it as well. So, um, yeah. All right. So, well, I hope you all have a great week. Um, if there's anything I can help you with, then please let me know. If you are looking for these products, remember to go to my blog and click on my shop button. Or you can go to my website um, and click on the shop button there as well. And I've got my host code too for January. Remember to use my host code and with orders over $75, you will get a thank you gift from me. And if you spend over 
during January and February, you'll also get a free celebration item. So lots and lots of reasons to go shopping. And if you would like any question, uh, sorry, if you'd like any information about joining my team and um, getting amazing freebies in your starter kit, as well as an ongoing 20% discount, then please feel free to get in contact with me and let me know. And I would love to help you. All right. Okay. Um, oh, bye, Rose. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Kelly says, have a great day, Mandy. Bedtime for you now. Yes. Have a good sleep, Kelly. <laughs> um, oh, that would be lovely, Kelly. I will do that. Yes. Thank you so much. That's lovely. All right. Well, have a great week, everyone. I hope you get some crafting in there somewhere. And I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday at four o'clock Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Have a great week, everyone. Happy crafting. Bye.